Federal Reserve expected to raise interest rates next month. What does that mean for the high-yielding bond market alternative stocks like the Real Estate Investment Trust? This group has been under pressure in the recent months in anticipation of a rate hike. But at a certain point, you got to wonder if they've come down enough. Take Apple Hospitality. The symbol here is A-P-L-E. It's a real estate investment trust that owns 236 hotels in high-end urban and suburban markets, all under the Hilton or Marriott brands. Now, two months ago, the company merged with Apple REIT 10. It, it's a $1.3 billion deal that created one of the largest select service lodging plays in the industry. And Apple Hospitality reported a strong quarter on Monday, yet the stock has recently been on the skids. It fell 10 percent, uh, much a little more than 10 percent in the past three months. Why? It's not because of the fundamentals. The business is doing just fine. It's because Apple Hospitality sports a monster near 7 percent yield. And with interest rates on the rise, high yielding stocks like this one become less attractive relative to treasuries, even if you think they shouldn't. But with the stock barely more than a point above its 52-week low, you got to ask, hey, maybe it's too cheap to ignore. So let's check in with Justin Knight, the CEO of Apple Hospitality, find out more about his company and his prospects. Mr. Knight, welcome to Mad Money. Good to see you, sir. Have a seat. Appreciate you having me. All right. Now, I want people to understand, uh, you're, you had a great quarter, but the stock goes down because it's part of what I call this, these rotations. So I want people to, to get comfortable with Apple Hospitality because they'll see if they look through the, the uh, different documents, you're very transparent, a lot of, lot of uh, uh, hotel chains that they know the names of. Why should they own ha- Apple Hospitality? What's the advantage of owning your real estate investment trust versus, the, the, uh, say, a Marriott? Or- it's a good question. So when we built our portfolio, we were really looking to mitigate risk and create stability for our shareholders. As you mentioned, we're one of the largest hospitality real estate investment trusts, broadly diversified, and we're spread across the United States, and we invest in brands that people recognize. Um, Our hotels are Hampton Inn, Hampton Inn Suites, Courtyards. Um, You know, we layered on top of that, very little debt, and as you mentioned, uh, we pay an incredibly attractive dividend. All right, now talk about that acquisition, what that means in terms of safety and diversification and how people should feel about the yield. Well, the acquisition significantly grew our portfolio. Uh, increase our footprint across the United States, and we were able to complete uh, the the transaction without uh, damaging our balance sheet. In fact, we grew and strengthened our balance sheet in the process. In in your documents, it's pretty clear still that the hospitality industry, the hotel business, is constrained. We're still not building uh, that many hotels, so as things go along, things just get better for those incumbents. That's true. So, uh, you know, over the past several years, we've seen supply growth in our industry below long-term averages. Right. We continue to see growth in the general economy. Uh, you know, we've grown year-to-date funds from operation 14%. Mm-hmm. Uh, things are still good for us. Now, you changed the way that you uh, are compensated. You've got a more variable structure. What does that mean for shareholders? Why do we? Why should we care about the variable management fee sliding scale? Because I know the sophisticated real estate investment, you know, people who just do this for a living, they might like that. But I want our viewers at home to know why this is a better incentive for, to own shares in the company. No, it, a very good question again. It, you know, really, we've looked to align uh, both our management companies and our executive team to the success of our shareholders. So at a property level, everybody from the general manager all the way up to the management companies that, that uh, manage our hotels all the way through the executive staff of our company, we succeed when our shareholders make money. Now, the yield would normally seem like it's too high to be believed, but this group has so cratered. Uh, that how do you distinguish Apple Hospitality from some of the other guys who at seven who actually have health care exposure and a lot of people are, sc- are a little concerned about? Right. Well, they, uh, you know, I mentioned our balance sheet. Right. We're 25 percent levered, which is, is That's very low, uh, very low for real estate. Um, we're broadly geographically diversified, so we don't have exposure to a particular market, um, you know, uh, that, that might drive performance. Well, I mean, I saw that there was some Texas, but Texas is fine. Chicago looks like a little bit weaker, but Chicago comes back. There's nothing That's structurally right. about Definitely. that. The, the beauty of our portfolio, we have underperforming markets that are uh, offset, more than offset, by performance in strong markets like Southern California and Phoenix. Well, I got to tell you, you never go wrong buying something at seven percent that's safe and diversified. That's Justin Nice, CEO of Apple Hospitality REIT. They're throwing away the REITs. Guys, if you need income, this is the kind of thing you should look at. Stick with Kramer. Booyah! Jim Kramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.